Actual motions of Earth. Actual motions are real motions. Motions that are happening. The first motion that we're going to talk about is rotation. So rotation happens when the Earth turns about its imaginary axis. Picture the Earth tilted 23 and a half degrees from the perpendicular. Earth also has what we call an imaginary axis. That axis runs from the North Pole to the South Pole. The Earth rotates around its imaginary axis, and one complete rotation equals 360 degrees, and it takes 23 hours and 56 minutes. We actually round that up to 24 hours, but there's a good reason why the Earth's rotation is 23 hours and 56 minutes. Let me attempt to show you why. So here's Earth traveling around the sun, and um, I want you to imagine the sun is on the left-hand side. That's what those arrows represent. And in the Earth, that white stick that's sticking from the Earth right now we, that's going to represent our noon position. In other words, if you were on the surface of the Earth at where that white stick was, it would be 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So the Earth rotates, but while it's rotating, it's also revolving, which means moving around the sun. We'll talk about that uh, in our next video. And now the Earth gets to a position where that white stick isn't facing the sun yet. So when the Earth gets to one complete rotation, meaning it's spun 360 degrees, that's actually called a sidereal day. And the time it takes the Earth to make that trip is actually 23 hours and 56 minutes, like I said. The extra um, four minutes, all right, comes from the Earth making that extra movement so that the Sun is now in the same position that it was when we were measuring it last. Sounds confusing, and it is, but what we're talking about is the 24-hour day that everyone's used to, that we all assume is what a day is equal to, is actually called a solar day. That's the time it takes the Earth to travel in a circle where the sun is in the same position from that last day, and that's equal to 24 hours, okay? Now that you know that, let's move on with some other details about rotation. The direction the Earth rotates is from west to east. And as we talked about with apparent daily motion, that rate is 15 degrees per hour. It's actually 1,000 miles an hour at the equator. It's very fast, and it's a little bit uh, slower at the poles. But no matter what, um, if we measured anything going across our sky, that's a 15 degree per hour movement. And that's because the rotation of Earth is responsible for the daily motions of the stars, sun, moon, and planets, like we've been talking about. So believe it or not, when that geocentric model was first developed, um, it was hard to produ produce evidence of Earth's rotation. And uh, there was a lot of uh, conjecture about whether or not the Earth was really rotating. That's why the uh, geocentric model existed for as long as it it did. And true evidence of Earth's rotation didn't turn up until about the eight, about 1851. So let's talk about evidence that proves that the Earth is actually a spinning sphere. The first piece of evidence is called the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect was uh, discovered by Gustave Gaspar Coriolis, and he used mathematics to conclude that the paths of projectiles, anything that's um, traveling over a long distance across the Earth, uh, is going to be affected by the Earth's rotation. Let me give you an example. So pretend I shot a cannonball from the North Pole, as shown here in this picture. If the Earth didn't rotate from my position at the North Pole, that cannonball would go straight out in a straight line from where I fired it from. But obviously, the Earth is rotating. So what happens is something like this. Same situation, 
But as I fire that cannonball out, well, now the Earth is curving away from us. And because of that, the projectile's path takes a curved path. So because the Earth is rotating, projectiles follow a curved path across the Earth's surface. It goes beyond cannonballs, to tell you the truth. The reason why this is an important motion for Earth science is in the case of weather and ocean currents. On the picture on the right, that's the northern hemisphere. And you can see uh, the wind, all right? That arrow is demonstrating what the wind will do. So uh, clouds, uh, storms will all be affected by the Coriolis effect and be pushed and, or deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. In the southern hemisphere, the push is to the left, as shown by that arrow. So in the northern hemisphere, uh, projectiles, wind, water are deflected to the right. In the southern hemisphere, they're directed to the, deflected to the left. A couple of MIT grad students decided that they wanted to prove how the Coriolis effect really worked. So they set up this um, apparatus. And the way that it works is it, it's a spinning apparatus that um, allows them to produce the same motion of Earth's rotation. So here they are just tossing a ball back and forth. Easy to catch a ball, right, when you're not moving. But now that they're spinning, that's a little bit more difficult, a little more challenging. So they're actually aiming towards each other, but because they're aiming in a straight path, their uh, opposite partner is rotating away from them. Take a look at this. You can see a better uh, understanding of what I'm talking about. So they're trying to actually throw the ball straight, but because they're rotating away, the ball doesn't get there. Okay, this is the same motion that's going on on Earth that affects our wind and our water. And it's proof that the Earth is rotating. So here's an even better look. Now the camera's rotating with the apparatus. Now watch the curved path of these balls as they shoot them across. They're not intentionally curving them. That's hard to believe. They're trying to throw it straight. But because they're rotating, the ball follows a curved path, which is exactly what the Coriolis effect says. Okay? This is a head-on look. You can see again, they're trying to toss it at their partner. And again, it's, it's being deflected away because the path that they're aiming towards is rotating away from them. So if you really wanted to toss the ball to your partner, what you'd have to do is aim ahead of them or aim behind them, depending on how they were rotating. So just to summarize, the Coriolis effect is, due to the Earth's rotation, projectiles follow a curved path to the right in the Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. So that's one piece of evidence. Another piece of evidence is Foucault's pendulum. So this is Leon Foucault, who demonstrated that the Earth was rotating using a swinging pendulum. And this is not just an ordinary pendulum. This is a massive pendulum, very weighted pendulum. And what he demonstrated that if I fix the pendulum to a point and let it swing, over time what you would see is that the pendulum draws a multiple pointed, a 12 pointed star. Okay? Now, the reason it does that is because as the pendulum swings freely back and forth, the Earth is rotating beneath it. And as the Earth rotates beneath it, it draws a different path every hour. So in the uh, Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, if you've been there, they have this. And this is a Foucault pendulum that's designed that every hour, this huge bob, that's what it's called, uh, swings back and forth. And every hour, it knocks down a new set of pins. So there are 48 pins set up so that every hour, two more pins get knocked down. So after 24 hours, 
all the pins would be set up. And this is an example or a, um, a direct piece of evidence that the Earth is really rotating beneath this free swinging pendulum. Because the pendulum's hanging, the Earth is allowed to rotate beneath it. So just to summarize, a fixed swinging pendulum appears to change direction as Earth rotates beneath it each hour. So in summary, our Earth is rotating. Um, it's rotating out in space, just like all the planets, our moon, even our sun. And that motion is uh, pretty fast, and it's always directed from west to east. All right. Uh, as we had previously talked about, it, the time it takes the Earth to rotate is one 360-degree rotation is 23 hours and 56 minutes. But the time it takes for the Earth to go from a noon position of the sun to the next noon position of the sun is 24 hours. Okay? So that's rotation of the Earth. Thanks for watching.